Hello, my soccer universe. Let's talk what happened in Western Europe. Uh, this was in many ways the most exciting and it has been for quite, quite a while, uh, especially in Spain, all the action that, that we saw there uh, was one of those things where you really know it is great to have games played in parallel. Um, the way Atletico Madrid came back when everything looked already down and out, it was a hell of a ride. And I think just the emotions moving forward in that uh, is something that uh, had to be witnessed to be really appreciating the whole thing. Uh, it was a little bit of a letdown, I think, in France, although also, also I mean, we are ending up with the exact same situation. Uh, but Lille clearly was affected by what was happening uh, <laughs> that uh, outside of, of, of the stadium with so many people expecting them to get another win to inch just a little bit closer. They just don't have the title quite yet. And actually they have a must win game ahead of them. Uh, Portugal, everything decided more or less. However, we had a really exciting Lisbon derby with seven goals scored. Sporting unfortunately losing their unbeaten mantle. Let's go in. Uh, uh, caveat first. I will focus because there was so much happening um, on the title races. I will in the tables comment briefly on what I think could happen in relegation and we'll talk about that there. But I haven't watched any highlights. It was just way too much and I have way too little time at the moment. So without further ado, let's move in. Um, title race in Spain. Atleti uh, the first thing, let's get out of it, Athletic Club Bilbao, Real Madrid was a really boring game in the first half. Hardly any, any shots power have in the second half. Uh, Modric and Casemiro a little bit took over the game. Yes, Bilbao had a few chances, but it seemed like an inevitable that Real Madrid is going to win that. In typically Real Madrid fashion as of late. Casemiro, I think, hit once the cross crossbar, and then in the 68th, he really, uh, with a nice assist of Bonsema, in the middle was offside, but he just by a fraction did not touch the ball, so I guess it was all right because he didn't even obstruct the view of the goalkeeper. Nacho makes it 1-0 and uh, this for me is the what I like about this is a kind of an unsung hero that makes it 1-0 which I, th I think is a nice touch there. Uh, Bilbao had one more chance uh, than also some uh, Luis Garcia sent off uh, where he doesn't even know why he got uh, Raul Garcia not Luis Garcia. Um, why but uh, seemingly he said some, uh, something and so the game finished 1-0 Real Madrid. And for 19 minutes, Real Madrid was actually virtually the leader of La Liga. For 19 minutes. I think this was the first time this season that we had, at least were, were, were virtually the first time this year, another leader than Atletico Madrid. Um, and Atletico Madrid, the entire game, was playing brilliantly. They had also Sona in the bag, left, right and center. Everywhere. They were creating chances, but they were missing, 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 missing. Luis Suarez uh, in particular had, uh, I think, two misses where one, he just takes the time to stop it and then puts it exactly on, on the post. And then another one where he really scuffed it, where you think uh, Luis Suarez should uh, put that back in the, in, in the back of, of, of the net. Then I think uh, Saul had a really nice shot from out of, of the distance hitting uh, the outside of the woodwork. So it was really, really, really uh, loads of pressure. And it was seemed only, it, it seemed inevitable. Then Savage scores, it is off, offside. I think that Luis Suarez scores another one. It's called off, uh, uh, off final scores. Oh, oh, was it someone else? Well, whatever, they scored two goals that were not given for offside. I mean, the Savage one was actually given. VAR took that one, but the other one was given offside as well. And it comes as it should come. With their first shot on goal, Ante Budimir, former last player, uh, takes a head up and brilliant save by Oblak with a strong hand, but it's clearly behind the line. And at first it is not given, there's no goal line technology in Spain, which I was not aware of. I found this rather curious. Uh, but the referee then halts the game. They tell the Telemavar, you know, watch, 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 watch. And really, it is a goal. And in the 75th minute, Atletico Madrid is 1 0 down, and Real Madrid are very much in the lead. And you think this is exactly one of those games uh, where you have many chances, you miss one, and then the one time 
you're not me no 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 not making it and now a special wrinkle comes because there were cooling breaks in madrid uh the weather maybe was not so hot but seemingly on the pitch the temp the temperature level was a lot higher and Diego Simeone used that cooling break uh, to great effect. And um, the funny thing is that he was not like yelling at them. He said, stay calm, stay collected. It will come. If you score one goal, the second goal will come. And that's exactly what happened. He brought on Joao Felix. And, uh, you know, in, in many ways, you, uh, you're thinking, I don't want to bring all those offensive players. <laughs> I want to grind it out. No, he brought on Joao Felix. He brought on Lodi. Uh, Arena and Dembele a little bit later on, uh, yeah, uh, Correa, who, who can, I had also a great miss. And it's a show of Felicia and Lodi, who in the 82nd minute, a great pass from uh, Felicia uh, to Lodi, who then with a nice finish puts it in, in the internet. It's 1 1. And at that point, it's game on again. And then, really, if you watch it in, in the replay, everyone will uh, go for the celebration after. But the winning goal by Luis Suarez is so calmly played especially the pass that carrasco picks out and how suarez is actually escaping all the traffic to be free pulling in the internet and the pile up afterwards you could see the emotion went wild there this was uh, this could well be a deciding moment of the season we still have to wait i mean it's never easy for atletico madrid atletico madrid doesn't get easy wins this season so uh, we have to see going forward, but what a hell of a drama right there. And the wild ride continues. That's the crazy part in the whole thing. Uh, Barcelona, on the other hand, a similar little bit to Atletico Madrid, however, uh, wasting many chances, having every, everything. Messi has it in, a really nice pass by Busquets, but you know, the defending was non non-existent. It was actually surprising that Santi Mina uh, gets the goal with the first shot on goal for uh, Celta and it was very much down to PK not having a good uh, positioning there at all and kind of duck, ducking away instead of facing the shot in the in. so uh, yeah Barcelona had a few cha uh, chances uh, Messi I think won by Arusha where from a short distance he just needs to find the net um, and what happens happens uh, late on uh, Santi Mina scores the winner after long league got sent off and Barcelona therefore completely out of the title race they were already out before but there was a time when they had the lead when it really seemed yeah it could get cold cozy up there but now uh, Barcelona out there and you've we see the picture again I decided to put, put it in there Messi totally dejected so yeah with all that we have the situation now that Atletico Madrid, two points ahead of uh, Real Madrid, but they need to win the final game. If Atleti draw points and Real Madrid win, Real Madrid win the head-to-head. -head. So Atletico Madrid needs to at least match the result of Real Madrid, which basically means they need to win. Uh, yes, they have a big, uh, they have still an 87% chance of winning, but it is a must win. And the must win is at Real Valladolid. Who are fighting for survival they need a win they lost uh earlier uh and find themselves in real trouble and to be honest look like unfortunately a, re a relegated team Uesca could make an escape they seem to be down down and out not too long lo long ago and maybe Elche as well so it all comes down uh to the final uh games expected is Uesca staying in and Atletico Madrid uh, being up so being champions so let's see there's also a little bit of fight of who goes into Europa League Europa Conference League between Villarreal and the Real Betis although Villarreal you know uh, yes they could they as we'll see they will play Real, uh, Real Madrid but they also do the focus on the Europa League final where they could qualify for the Champions League thus knocking Sevilla in, into the Europa League it is rather rather tricky I think you have to go full on in both games and so we get to the final round uh it is all they changed it around it is not not play on saturday at six o'clock real madrid has to play via real we have to see how it is how it is um and how other games are, are, are going especially uh betis um who is fighting with um via real for this final spot and also real sociedad uh one 
of those needs to go in the Conference League. Uh, Real Madrid, we are Real, Real Madrid against Atletico Madrid. Uh, all the, 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 the three games that have been put out of that slot um, have no bearing on the table anymore. Moving on to France, again, title race. This case not as exciting because Lille, so many people accompanying the bus, cheering them on, but they were nervous. They were hardly making a chance. They did not play with all this uh, pressure going forward that we saw uh, last week um, against Lens. No, there was nothing there. Uh, there were a few chances. I think one by Arusho in the first half where I think he needs to make the uh, the goal. And then late on, uh, freaky by Yaziki, where Etienne Green, and a perfect name for a center Etienne keeper, uh, just gets his hand on and it goes on to the post and then a little bit later Burak Gilmas has another shot that is saved uh, a few centimeters before the line. Those were the chances. It really seemed like the pressure was getting to them, especially since uh, PSG very early or early on had already the lead. I mean Abdel Hamid uh, is sent off in the 10th minute for us uh, for a handball. And then Neymar with the cheeky of penalties makes it 1-0, Mbappé adds a second one in the 24th, and then it was all going PSG's way. Marquinhos and uh, Ken uh, completing the route of Reims and putting PSG back in the title. And again, pressure, 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 pressure. Minuscule chance, chances for Monaco are kept, kept left through uh, Ben Yedda and Golovin. Monaco playing in red jerseys, which with the same pattern was kind of weird against Ren in black. This was a weird jersey, may, 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 may in many ways. Um, minuscule chance, chance because it comes down to goal difference and they will not be able to make that that even up. Uh, Ongo Batiza Z in the 68th makes it a little bit more tight, but in the end, uh, Monaco hangs on also because of Ren. Uh, got a player sent off and so in the French table it's a similar situation Lille has only one, one point but it's a similar situation Lille needs to at least match what PSG is doing because had uh, if they finish level on points PSG has a much better goal difference it's not not head to head it's goal difference and they will not be able to make that one up. So in all the cases where they would finish level on points PSG will win that one basically meaning um, Lille lo losing and PSG having a draw. Everything else, if uh, Lille gets a, on, only a draw in the final game and PSG wins, PSG is any, any, any way ahead. So uh, really, really, really tight. There is also, of course, the situation where they all finish level on points with Monaco or uh, Lille and PSG lose and then Monaco could win its minuscule chance again and it comes down to goal difference. I give them, it's less than a percent. Uh, that uh, Monaco become champion, but they're still in there. On the bottom, it's actually quite cozy and tight, but not very comfy. Nîmes, unfortunately, down, uh, not standing a chance, and actually not a bad one because they uh, got a big win. And now uh, Lorient is not safe, Brest is not safe, Strasbourg is not safe. Um, I would even, there's probably even scenarios where uh, Reims and Bordeaux could end up in the relegation battle. So, uh, rather, rather tight there. If we see it, you see this big blob down, down, down there. It's very, very uh, exciting in many ways. Uh, it is at the moment Brest who have to, um, I think Brest have to uh, play PSG, who are a little bit on the uh, uh, favorite to go into this playoff so uh, we have to see how it pans out final games as I said Brest against PSG and Angers against Lille uh, Lens against Monaco that's another reason why Monaco will probably not make it and for going down Nantes has to play against uh, at home to Montpellier with Strasbourg against Lorient so one of those Reims against Bordeaux um, yeah Bordeaux is probably safe so uh with those head to heads uh, uh with we with, with those head to heads i think those teams will not have a stand a big chance but Brest is probably a little bit worrying there uh we also have a cup final and that's could throw another wrinkle into the whole thing monaco has been beating psg twice already this season so uh depending on how that cup final goes this also could affect a little bit how the uh, last day of League 1 goes, which is a little bit weird in many ways, but yeah. 
PSG has to play two games and Lille has an entire week to think about that game, how to prepare against Angers. It will be interesting and maybe Monaco uh, could pip them to another title. So we have to see. Finishing in Portugal, um, it's the second to last round. I think the standard result was Benfica against Sporting, where uh, Sporting clearly, they had celebrated. They found themselves 3-0 down in the first half. However, they came back. Pedro Gonzalez uh, put one back just before the half. Uh, Seferovic with Pena ma uh, makes the 4-1. The, um, the but then, really, Sporting was pressing to make it uh, to get an equal. Santos and Pedro Gonzalez um, make it 4-3 but they cannot find uh, an equalizer, and so it's the first loss for Sporting. Lots of uh, stuff have, have happening in the middle and on the bottom of the table, um, where, yeah, Rio Ave, who just won the Europa, Europa League, might actually end up in the relegation battle or even get relegated. So a really, really tight down there, as it has been all season in Portugal. Uh, at the moment, it's really the Boavista Pro got the escape in the final round. Um, it's all the important games are played that can't can, 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 at, at the same time and then it finishes up with Sporting as Maritimo. But uh, I'm more or less, the, sport, the Portuguese season for me is more or less done, except Cup Final on Sunday. They do it right. They finish the season with a Cup Final. Uh, no, and probably the only uh, country that I'm, co co I'm covering to do so. Uh, before that, I also want to have mentioned, let's go all the way to the east, but I don't that uh, in Turkey, Besiktas won the title of Galatasaray by a single goal. That's also uh, needs to be said. In any case, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop comments below what you thought and who do you think will win these titles in, this, uh, in France and in Spain. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.